Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Global Connections with Rup Madi Kandakar, who is a geopolitical analyst. We're going to talk about Modi 3.0 now that India has indeed voted and he slipped in. So what was the problem with Modi, Rup Madi? Um, why did he just slip in? I thought he was a popular guy. Aloha, Jay, and lovely to be back with you. And today, Modi 3.0. Uh, so it's the first time since 1962 that we have a prime minister who's elected three times on the trot. See, Jay, India is the largest uh, democracy with the largest population. Uh, and uh, it was like a voting festival that took place. And like you said, everybody expected a landslide victory. But it was a close, close call. So we'll go through the nuances of this election, and it will be really interesting for you to know why this happened. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it really is a, an extraordinary thing. You know, because I mean, Modi and India have been like synonymous uh, for as long as the, the last few years that he's been in office. And all of a sudden we find that maybe he's not the most popular guy in town. What was what was working at his popularity? What made him less popular than we thought? So, Jay, the pitch was uh, that Modi was making was infrastructure development, uh, development for everybody. And uh, after, you remember Jan January, we spoke about the uh, Ram Mandir being built. And then they said it was about religion. And Modi was trying to uh, get religion into elections. And then we had the opposition parties uh, coming for EVMs, the electronic voting machines. They are bogus. Now, this election, leave aside everything, it has proved that the EVMs are working. Democracy is working and Modi fought well. So, uh, Jay, when Modi started his uh, election campaign, he spoke about it's a 545-seat uh, parliament in India. And uh, Modi uh, gave a war cry that we would have 400 seats plus. Now, CJ, it was a very bold, if you analyze it in a, um, a straight sense, it's a very bold call because the anti-incumbency factor, as you know, comes into play. Anybody who is getting elected for a third time will, of course, face a lot of flack. We had newspapers all over the liberal, uh, the pseudo-liberals who were saying that democracy is dead, Modi, Modi is a uh, dictator and all these uh, stupid connotations which were not right. He is uh, he's fighting uh, a democratic uh, election and everybody voted, uh, you know, uh, attempts by uh, uh, bureaucrats for calling people to vote, exercise your right to vote. All these exercises were happening very robustly, Jay. And uh, you see, people were voting in large numbers. Now there is a clear-cut margin uh, in this, uh, in which who has voted where. And after the Ram Mandir, you, you thought that uh, he would ride a wave of Hindu nationalism because Hinduism is the um, dominant religion in India. Didn't happen. He lost in the very state that he has uh, uh, brought up this Hindu uh, nationalism. He lost Ayodhya where the Ram Mandir is situated. Still, he has won a uh, uh, his party remains the largest democracy. His pre-poll alliance still has won uh, the elections. The uh, narrative that is set uh, in all over uh, all the newspapers was that he has not got a long line slide victory, but his pre-poll alliance did get 300 seats. So 100 less, but he is still won. There is in any race, there's a winner and there's a loser. It doesn't matter whether you win by a nose, neck, or, you know, it is uh, whatever. You have won. He has won. And the opposition parties, Jay, 32 parties came together. There is no agenda. It is the agenda for these anti... Uh, the other opposition parties was just anti-Modi. We want Modi out of the system. And, uh, Jay, the... The shocking fact about this is that they went to an extent of such lies that they went to each doorstep and told the uh, people that every woman would get one lakh rupees, that is 8,000, like uh, $100 every month, just like that. So they're given forms to fill. 
and they said Modi would change the constitution. Now, India is a, a country which has got uh, these issues of reservation for the Dalits and all. They got scared that the constitution would be changed. So there was a lot of misinformation being spread in this. Still, they could not manage a victory or a, you know, even a dent. Now, the largest democracy, la, the opposition party of the BJP is the Congress. And combine 2014, 2019, and 2024, they don't add up to what uh, the BJP has got in 2024, the Bharatiya Janta Party. Uh, they have not, uh, uh, Congress has not reached. So the leadership of Mr. Rahul Gandhi has failed completely in this whole uh, situation. And uh, uh, the opposition, uh, India did not buy this um, idea of opposing Modi. You know, it was a fervent attempt. The alliance opposite Modi was itself called India. That is, uh, you know, so they went to that extent to show that they are patriotic, but it didn't work. End of the day, he has taken oath as the Prime Minister of India. And yes, uh, Jay, we had, <laughs> we had external factors like uh, there was a very uh, overt attempt by um, uh, Mr. George Soros to uh, give a, you know, a hand a workbook in which you can undermine uh, Modi's government. It, there's a media outcry. There's a propaganda working against the Modi that Modi's against uh, the minority uh, Muslim factor. But when he promises development, when he promises houses, when he promises uh, food rations, he does not give it on the basis of religion. He gives it to all. And after taking that also. If you cry over religion, that is a double-sided, uh, double-faced, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, is, uh, would you say that? Uh, what? Why? Why is George Soros involved at all? He's not Indian. Hmm. What? What is his motivation here? Uh, he is this. We still don't understand that. But he is funding the uh, Congress Party. Uh, he is very close to Mr. Rahul Gandhi. And uh, who's who's attempting to be the leader of the opposite party for around now since twenty years, Jay? Nothing is working for him. So uh, you see, Jay, India is on a path to development. It has quickly become the fourth largest uh, economy on the way to third, and a roadmap to becoming a developed country by twenty forty seven with the largest population youth population under 65 who's got potential to uh, you know 65 percent who have potential to work a, a, a robust middle class who spends so it's got things working for it now you don't want such competition if you go on the international structure you want a system where you know india is pettered down by pakistan where it is uh, you know has antagonistic uh, enemies like uh, china you know you want it to be under pressure all the time. And when nothing is working, that is when external forces do interfere in Indian elections. And it has happened in these elections that a lot of external influence has uh, come. If you see the election campaigns and you see Mr. Modi at 73 working so hard, everybody thought, why is he doing so? He's got you know, the Ram Mandir, he's got the Hindu uh, votes are with him. It will be a landslide victory. Everybody was relaxed, but he was telling people, go to the booths and vote. The, uh, you know, he was just uh, from place to place, from north to south, east to west, he was just campaigning nonstop for the pre-poll alliances. Well, did he camp- know that there were outside influences working? Yes, 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 yes. So, it let is. Let me just count some of them, okay? And you can tell me how real they were. Um, yeah. Okay, we talked about George Soros uh, supports the opposition. Um, mm. We talked about the, I guess, the, the left. The left opposes Modi. Am I right about that? Um, yes, yes. I wonder if China is in the yeah. mix somehow. China has interests in, in India, and maybe they don't like Modi. I don't know. Do you, uh, Pakistan is always, uh, you know, in contention with India. Um, were, were they involved somehow? Um, what and what about Russia? Ru- 
you know, Russia is is past master expert. Putin is an expert on misinformation. Misinformation. <laughs> um, is he trying to manipulate elections in India? Talk about the various international influences that were in play in Modi's attempt, Modi's successful attempt uh, to run for prime minister. Jay, you're right about this China being with the left, but the left has got absolutely no presence left right now in uh, India, except in Kerala, uh, one which is a Congress-dominated uh, state. So, and uh, um, Pakistan is a failed state. They did not congratulate, extend congratulations to Modi till even he took the oath. And there was a big uh, attack, Riyasi uh, attack, terrorist attack on pilgrims going to uh, 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 holy site, Hindu site, uh, terrorists from Pakistan attacked uh, this, Riyasi. So all eyes were on Riyasi that time. Uh, and, uh, the you know, it keeps it cannot function. It's a failed state. It doesn't have the capacity to interfere in our elections right now. India has surpassed it far and uh, uh, long ahead. And Russia, Jay, for Russia, it doesn't matter which party is in uh, place. India is strategically a friend of Russia. I keep on repeating this because they have stood the test of time. Jay. <laughs> so uh, for Putin, he will not look into this. And Modi is a very, very strong ally of uh, Putin. We have seen it how the oil and gas play happens uh, through India for Russia. Uh, so for Putin to hold Modi close is good for him. And uh, uh, Jay, External forces in the sense that uh, there were fatwas, fatwas, um, calls for in uh, the Islamist uh, sections to vote for any non-BJP candidate. So uh, we don't have this kind of uh, a call to the Hindus that you vote for this candidate. You you know, we have so many Hindus who will debate on whether development is done or not done or not done. But for the minorities, it is just a question of your reservation. It's just a question of who's against your religion and who you want to eliminate. I told you there is only one religion in the world who has got a political roadmap. None of the religions have a political roadmap. Their roadmap is to reach political uh, clout and then dictate terms from there on. It is happening in every country in the world. So uh, minorities play a very big role in any election today. Uh, anywhere in the world, because they are attempting to uh, make way. Uh, now, uh, uh, Sadiq Khan in London, as a London mayor, he got elected the third time. Why? Because the minorities came out and voted. The British arguably were in the pubs on that day. It was a holiday for them. Why go and vote? But you will see the minority saying, no, this is my man. I will go and vote for him. He should be the mayor of London. I get benefits by him being the mayor of London. So this kind of political maneuvering, which happens by a particular religion, is only in one. Yeah. You know, you raised the, the question of religion. And Iran is a, a theocracy. And yes. Iran is not, it's not contiguous with India, but it's right on the other side of Pakistan and Afghanistan. It's not far away. And I wonder if Iran was an influence or tried to influence uh, the the election that just took place. Have they been involved in disinformation, misinformation, social media, what what have you, in uh, India's election process? No, Jay. Uh, Iran is not an influence in Indian uh, elections at all because uh, it is just the uh, minority here itself in India who wants to uh, keep the... They, they visualize BJP as a Hindu fascist party. Okay, now they're not fascist, they're democratic. They don't favor Hinduism because there is no scheme or nothing done just in particular for Hindus and uh, nothing for the Muslim. There is, or Sikhs. We have so many religions in India. It's not just Hindu Muslim. It is Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, uh, Jain, Buddhist, all these things. But uh, it's a, a one for all and all for one kind of a system. There is nothing that there's no disc discrimination on the basis of religion. But just creating this narrative that uh, we are being discriminated on the basis of religion is false. 
and they want to see them out of the system. BJP out. Mm. So that what was about, the agenda. What about the U.S.? What about the U.S.? Was did the yes. U.S. express any view about Modi's re-election? Um, yes. Did, uh, yeah, tell me. Yeah, Biden congratulated him, Jay. But uh, you see, the National Security Advisor Ajit Doval he spoke about how external forces were working and did not want Modi at the top of the, you know, uh, helm of power at this time, CJ. India is on a path of development. If you bring instability by getting a new leader, now there's a working team, you know, immediately they have gone to offices today and resumed the work that has happened yesterday. So the continuity that happens uh, works for India. Now, when you have a new government coming in, new coalition partners, the other opposition is of 32 parties trying to please each other. Everybody will say, okay, you you take this, this post, I will take this post. And there will be a lot of cribbing and crabbing. There will be a lot of corruption. They will come to a new work setup. And there will be a dent in the uh, speed of development in India. That is where uh, it benefits countries who are not happy with India's progress. So that was the main reason why external influences were very hard in this election. So is um, is Modi going to be able to put together um, a coalition government? You know, in um, parliamentary governments, uh, the, the winner has to put oh. together a coalition. Is he going to have any trouble doing that? Because that will affect his policies and his power. Um, is he trying to do it right now? What do you hear? Yeah, Jay, uh, he had 46 ministers in the uh, 2019, uh, raised to 56 and today 76. But Jay, luckily for him, this is a pre-polar alliance. They fought this election together. Modi had go has gone and campaigned for these alliance partners before the election. It's not that after the election, he has not had the majority. He has still got the largest party. 240, his party has got. He has to reach 270. But with his poll, with pre-poll alliance and partners, he reaches 293. With another support of independent candidates, he reaches 303. So uh, he is very comfortable. And these alliances, alliance partners, Jay, they have not got 15 seats Six, maximum is 16 seats, 16 up. So he's 240 and his largest alliance partner is 16 and 12 and then five and nine like this. So they are, they are fringe partners. They are, not, uh, part, uh, they are not partners who have got 70 seats and they uh, hold a chunk of the government. So they cannot really dictate terms and they created a formula. Last time they had created a formula that for every Alliance partner, there will be one cabinet post. This time they have created a formula that if you have five seats, you will get one cabinet post. But the main portfolios stay with Modi and his team. And the same ministers continue because they have an agenda set. Jay. They have a manifesto which they have to go through and they will go through that. So the team continues. How does it work in India? Um, how long is he going to be in office and, and could uh, he, he lose his influence in, in the parliament and lose his job before his presumptive term is over. Jay, it's for a term of uh, five years and uh, he continues for five years uh, at one stretch and then re-election. Um, we have 16 elections all over the world, Jay, in 2024. So a lot of government changes all over. So, so that could happen for him. No, he is in a stable government, Jay. He is elected for five years, and now there will be state elections. But they are coming up with a formula calling one, one election, one nation. So all the, we have the 26 states, so they will have all the elections at one time. Okay. So they want that to come into place. So that makes him but strong. But he's elected for five years. What, what, are, what are his policies that, you know, that he has campaigned on? Uh, what do you expect he's going to focus on? I mean, certainly um, his relationship with Russia is one of them. Uh, the relationship with China is another. In fact, I, I think he's trying to mend fences with Xi Jinping right now. Um, mm -hmm. And I suppose, uh, you know, his relationship with the U.S., the world is dividing into large groups, large population centers, large economies. And he's definitely, India is definitely a player 
So his his policies are certainly a, more than just infrastructure in in the country. His policies have to affect India's relationships with these large players, um, the, the the big powers. Uh, what 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 is he saying he's going to do, and can he do those things? CJL divided into two roughly. On the domestic front, he's coming up with a uniform civil code. That means if you have two children, you will get benefits of uh, the government and it's a population control policy. You, there'll be a single law of marriage, divorce, uh, uh, legal authority. There'll be no uh, religious uh, laws because today in India, there are separate laws for Muslims. They can go to their courts and decide their family affairs and Hindus go to the legal courts. So they, he will bring it out that everybody has one law to follow. Secondly, he's bringing the CAA, which is that uh, he has bought out that, uh, which uh, the Hindus which are persecuted abroad, they can automatically get Indian uh, citizenship because on the grounds of their persecution. Right. So that is on. And for the farmers, he's put out a big package of uh, incentives uh, because India is mainly an agricultural uh, um, nation. So uh, this right now, in the beginning, he's just set it up. And on the international front, Jay, um, India is, this BJP Gullet government is perceived as a right-wing narrative uh, uh, following uh, government in the international media. And now we see in the European Union also, Melanie of Italy has sweep, uh, swept the elections over there. So we have right-wing, right-wing uh, and, you know, so these kind of considerations are going to come into play. And uh, Jay, uh, Russia-Ukraine war, Israel uh, ally, uh, China with China, he's kept a very neutral stance. He's not uh, spoken about the Taiwan issue, nothing. So he's kept China very, um, what do you say, neutral. And Pakistan, he is ignored because they really don't have sustenance uh, uh, level uh, they're working right now, Jim. Mm -hmm. Sustenance. I mean, they are just hand to mouth. You know, it's it's clear, Rupati, that um, uh, Europe is concerned about the possible election of Trump. And in mm -hmm. fact, a lot of European countries in the EU and in NATO are m making alternative, you know, um, uh, plans to deal with what happens if Trump gets elected. What happens mm -hmm. in India if Trump gets elected? Uh, what what will Modi do? Does Modi like Trump? Um, you know, everything seems to be moving right these days. A lot of, as you mentioned, a lot of countries in the EU are moving right. Uh, these elections mm. are revealing. Um, does this reveal that India is moving right? And does that mean uh, that Modi will be mm, more friendly with Trump? Oh, Jay, you remember we had done a show when Modi, uh, when Trump came to India and uh, Modi had organized a road show for him, which was as big, bigger than ever, uh, bigger than Nixon had uh, 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 got organized for him by Indira Gandhi. So he was over the moon with this kind of reception in, uh, by Modi. And Modi took him to his home, home state where he has got, you know, the biggest stadium today, indoor uh, cricket stadium, and that was filled to the brink and shouting Trump, 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 and Modi, Modi. So he, you know, he plays to the galleries, Trump. He loves this showmanship. And he was really, uh, it was one of his last trips before his last presidency uh, ended. So he was uh, very, very close to Modi at that time. And uh, Jay, we know in Trump's uh, re-election, first part first, he will go and do domestic Und undoing of all of Biden's policies. So he's going to be busy on the domestic front before he hits the international stage and then, you know, uh, disowns UN, NATO, everybody. <laughs> so uh, he's going to have a very a whirlwind uh, uh, return to uh, politics Trump. And uh, uh, like Modi, you know, he is, uh, I'll tell you, Jay, one thing is about uh, Putin, Modi, Trump. They are old school. They are nationalistic. They keep the nation first over everything. Keep aside their policies. We don't like them or anything. Keep it on, on the side. But patriotism and nationalism is the uh, 
thread which is common amongst these old school leaders who always think about what brings domestic security, safety, and development first. And that's what uh, appeals to the masses. Everybody at heart is a conservative. So that plays to the mind also and to the pocket also. <laughs> that way. I'm a little worried, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually more than a little worried. I'm, I'm wondering if I could uh, visit India and uh, take up uh, immigration <laughs> status there and and um, and have the protection of the Indian democracy. Is that possible? Can can uh, foreigners uh, uh, get not a permanent residence in India? <laughs> you always welcome to your family to India. I'm sure about that. Uh, this uh, Indian democracy is you know failing and all with such headlines everywhere. Too. And uh, even after uh, Modi's party got 240 as the largest party, their pre poll alliance crossed the, uh, uh, what is that, majority mark, still newspapers were harping about how Modi has lost. So uh, it's a uh, big, we, spoke, we always speak about this propaganda war that happens. It is so strong and the narrative that the media sets is so misleading, I'm sure, Hundreds of our viewers or whatever, they don't know what is exactly the situation in India. You just feel Modi has lost like that. But you don't know what is the nuances of this uh, election. Well, what about what about the Indian democracy? I mean, we know that India has 1.4 billion people. We know that its economy is going strong. Um, it's, it's in a competition directly with China these days. Um, we know that it's, uh, you know, the largest democracy in, in the region, for sure. Um, and the question I put to you is, uh, is that democracy safe? Um, yes. Were there any indications of um, infirmities in the voting process? Were there any claims that the voting process was rigged in some way or that wasn't as democratic as we would have wished? Uh, you know, like what happened after the 2020 election in this country. Um, was there any controversy about that? When he declared that he uh, Modi will win 400 seats today, the opposition went into a tizzy. And they said, as soon as the elections come out, we are going to start civil disobedience right on the... We are going to go and protest against this EVMs, the electronic voting machines being rigged. This was the kind of... Uh, and uh, Jay, when they came up to 270 um, Modi, depending upon his allies now, and 232 the opposition, the opposition thought now maybe we have a chance that we can break the alliance partners and we can come. So the narrative about the machines being rigged and everything just stopped. So clearly it was just an election gimmick. Their talk about the elections being rigged was just a gimmick when they thought they had uh, touching figures they started getting into mode of trying to break his alliance, coalition partners. So that time, democracy is very alive. They, they didn't speak at all about elections being rigged. So uh, this entire uh, propaganda that elections uh, are rigged and you know the machines are uh, malfunctioning and they work for the government and the government is uh, the Modi. Modi is a dictator and he di really dictates. It was all false. It was false agenda. It's a false agenda, and the opposition clearly won on the basis of anti-Modi elements in the population. Jay. Good. Well, people people are confident then of the system. They're confident. They're happy, proud even of the democracy yes. in India. That that yep. really says a lot. Um, but let me ask you: I mean, India is um, gee, it's surrounded by countries that have connections with terrorists. I mentioned before Iran. Iran has proxy terrorists in every direction you can think of. And they're, they're supported by Russia in that regard. Afghanistan has terrorists. Um, and Pakistan uh, was the, the, you know, uh, the source of the attack on the hotel in Mumbai not too many hmm. years ago. Um, hmm. Is India safe? Is India safe from terrorism? Can this happen again? Um, can it you know, can, should it be a problem for Modi? Uh, what, what is he doing? What is he saying about um, 
you know, minimizing, avoiding uh, dealing with the possibility of terrorism in India. Jay, in the last term, we had the Article 370 revoked, which gave us the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and uh, Union Territory of Leh. So uh, Kashmir, which was a point which was being jingled by uh, Pakistan on every international stage, came to a standstill because India, uh, Kashmir, Jammu Kashmir became, is an integral part of India. So And with their failed economy, with no money at their coffers. They are. Uh, they. I, I tell you that they are really at subsistence levels. And earlier, Indian foreign policy, Indian uh, considerations by the international uh, uh, elements was always India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan. But India has gone far ahead in terms of development, uh, in terms of uh, you know progress to be compared with Pakistan. Pakistan is never in the reckoning in the race with India. So just because your uh, uh, location uh, proximity to India doesn't mean you compare with India. So that aside, Jay, being a failed state and fighting for subsistence, that is out of the issue. But they do mingle the yesterday's, uh, day before yesterday's attack at Riyasi, where they killed uh, pilgrims and the bus was shot head on by a terrorist. Uh, sponsored by Pakistan, is one of the um, many times that Pakistan tries to, you know, hurt Indian sentiments like this, disturb, but they will be uh, dealt with. You know, you hunt down terrorists and you take, uh, try to avoid them. Um, Afghanistan, Jay, pa Taliban has got good relations with India because uh, they are always kept at, uh, what do you say? They were never antagonistic to India, Taliban. Mm. Uh, the Indian embassy was protected even when there was a Taliban takeover. So uh, Modi has never has kept Afghanistan as a regular partner. And Iran has been, since you know uh, the beginning, Jay, there is a lot of development give and take about the uh, ports, about everything. And Iran's proximity to India is far away. So they don't really interfere with Indian affairs. Mm. So these three nations away. So Modi is strong on the economy too. He's built the economy in, in mm. previous administration. And I suppose that's part of his campaign promise now to continue to build it, to be a, a global economic power. Um, on the other hand, there are social issues in India and I, I caught one thing in the newspaper just yesterday about a, a young woman who was killed, murdered. Um, I know that the media, the media tends to exaggerate these things in a country of 1.4 billion people. There's likely to be some bad actors. Um, but, but what about that? We heard a few years ago about the, the women on the buses. Remember that? Uh, how yeah. They kidnapped on the buses and then. Um, tortured or murdered. Um, these social problems, uh, is is Modi committed to resolve that? Is he doing anything to resolve that? Where Where is India going as a democracy, um, as a, a sophisticated, well-educated electorate? How come there is still these social problems? Jay, um, let's start with the economic front that he has uh, bought uh, India from the 11th position to the 4th position. He has brought back uh, a lack of ton of gold back from the uh, from England, which was kept in 1991. He's uh, purchased more gold, so he's making the Indian economy foundationally strong. Okay, Economically, he's well off. Now, taking the social issues and domestic, there are going to be uh, areas where there are going to be vulnerabilities. And being a progressive nation, Jay, uh, you get more access to your freedom. You get more access to uh, uh, development. It is not a closed uh, society. There is uh, freedom of uh, will. There's freedom of, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, uh, Indian criminal code, which was um, put in place by the British. Now, the new one of the new uh, issues of this government is to bring in an entirely new law and order system, uh, penal code, which is according to the Indian society. 
one of those laws was that if you hit and run, you get 10 years of jail time and a, a, a fine. So that was not in place before. In earlier laws, Jay, it, this is an example I'm giving, that you could hit and run and then go to court, face your bail, face a trial and everything. So he's bringing these nitty gritties into a place. Suppose there's a, a, a you know misbehavior with women, there will be changes in laws for that. Earlier there was minority uh, protection for crimes. Now heinous crimes are being treated as the minor minor has to be treated as uh, uh, adult. So these changes in the criminal system uh, of India is being brought about by him. And uh, Jay, uh, social issues, if you go to see, he, he took away one of the biggest social issues of the minority class, the Muslims, that is known as the triple talaq. Now, triple talaq, Jay, is when the man can easily just say the word talaq three times and the woman is out of the man. And she has to purify herself again with another person in his family and come back to him. So that was derogatory for the minority uh, population. And he did away with that legally. It is not allowed in India now anymore. So protecting women has been a highlight of the Modi government. Women are safer in many of the um, Modi-led government states also. You know, uh, Rubmati, you you've uh, just you know mentioned that um, India has um, <clears throat> uh, good relations with Iran and Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not so much Pakistan, but uh, and then has good relations with uh, with China. And China, of course, is the capstone on this whole area. Physically, look on the map, uh, and and otherwise. <clears throat> Um, and Russia, of course, which is on top of all those stand countries to your west. Um, and, you know, we have changes in the international global order going on. We have mm -hmm. Putin's uh, violation of the rule of not to attack your neighbor. Um, and depending on what happens there, China may violate the same rule on attacking Taiwan. Uh, and, uh, you know, India has been very careful uh, Modi had been very careful and pragmatic to avoid contention with all these countries. And it has been, you know, uh, economically, I suppose, and geopolitically in his interest and India's interest to take that position. But things could get worse and they may get worse in the next five years of his term. And my question to you, I know this is a hard question, Rupmati, is, 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 is um, Modi... Uh, flexible enough to change his position depending on the morality of what some of these other superpowers do? Um, uh, or is he going to stick with it and always, um, you know, always uh, accept what China and Iran and Russia are asking him to do? Oh, Jay, he's got a head of his own. He's been a chief minister of a state since 2001. So uh, he's a very headstrong person. And uh, his main goal is India. So, Jay, when and you see flexibility in his dealing with China, he started informal uh, wooing with Xi Jinping. But then when he saw that nothing, is, they keep it cool. And... Uh, his foreign minister is a diplomat who has been 20 years ambassador to China. So he knows Chinese relationship, superb, Jay. Uh, what to do with China, he knows very well. And uh, Jay, uh, in, 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 in the international system, there are no permanent enemies, no permanent friends. We know that. So, uh, and like you said, the situation changes anytime. And uh, to deal with it, headstrong is the main point, Jay. Because at the beginning of Modi's term, if you see, Pakistan was considered an equal adversary of India. It was considered at par with India. But then reality struck. And uh, when you see Modi declaring that, OK, they have nuclear weapons, they will use it. But doesn't mean we don't have nuclear weapons. He started that aggression. Earlier it was, no, no, don't touch Pakistan. They've got nuclear weapons. And when Modi came on the scene, he said, okay, they have, we also have. We will also use. 
So that scared <laughs> the wits out of them because they used to just threaten. They never got a threat back. And when they entered that, uh, you know, uh, uh, they had a terrorist attack. Modi struck uh, inside Pakistan area. It's the surgical strikes as they were, and the opposition cried, you and cry about it never happened, it never happened. And it was a point where India went inside Pakistan territory and struck them. After that, Jay, they have not tried a very, you know, overt, covert uh, attack on India. They have kept very quiet. So, uh, He's aggressive. He's very, very aggressive. And make no mistake, he is very offensive when it uh, when he comes to a point of defending India. And that is kept all these adversaries quiet. And Jay, yeah. he's the first, he, first prime minister to visit Israel. People never visited Israel on the basis of, there's a lot of minority appeasement if you study Indian politics, minority appeasement in Indian politics. So you try to keep the minority very happy by not visiting Israel, by keeping a, you know, a pro-minority uh, stand. He never did that. If he likes Israel, he will go to Israel. He'll be friends with Israel. He'll supply Israel. If he wants to build a Ram Mandir, he will build a Ram Mandir for the Hindus. It doesn't matter if it hurts anybody. He is ready to take on the repercussions. That is what sets him apart from uh, the other people. Other leaders. I had, I had forgotten, but uh, you reminded me that, <laughs> um, that uh, aside from all of that, we have to always remember that India is a nuclear power. It, yes. has, it, has, it has been very mm, cautious about uh, holding that club over anybody's head. But the fact is, it's a nuclear power. And that somehow feeds into this whole discussion. But we're not finished discussing, actually, Rupati. There's much more that we need to discuss. We need to be better educated about India, about its possibilities, not only in the region, um, but in the world. And I, I hope we can do other shows uh, to drill down on exactly what it is and what it means to others and where it will go under, under uh, where it will go under, under Modi or otherwise. Thank you very much, Rupmati. Thank you for having me, Jay. My pleasure.